All right, this one actually in some ways is easier to use the formula. So again, let's, let's look at the formula that we just went over. Surface area is equal to two times the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the whole shape. Or we were calling it like the length of the whole shape before. So height of the whole shape or the length of the whole shape, whichever one you want to do. Okay. Um, so let's take a look here. This one, this one, uh, when someone asked in a little bit ago, said, how do we know which one is the base? In any other prism other than a rectangle, it's easy to find the base. On a triangular prism, the base is a triangle. It's the one shape that's different. So let's take a look here. Let's say we had a triangle, triangular prism. Let's draw a little sketch here. All right, let's say we have this triangular prism here, okay? Um, and I won't draw the back back part, so you guys, maybe that confuses you sometimes. All right, so let's, let's give some measurements. So in this case, we'll say this is uh, 12 centimeters. We'll say this part is 10 centimeters. This is 10 centimeters. And this is 10 centimeters as well. And then you've got this uh, this height part here. And we'll say this is eight centimeters. All right, so what's clear on this one is the base is a triangle. So let me draw the net out for this one for the for you guys. Okay, so if I was to unfold it, right? If I was to unfold this, I'd end up with one big rectangle in the middle. And be kind of like this. Right? And that would be if you kind of unfolded it, right? You, you, you take it apart and then you kind of open it up like that. This is what it would look like. And, and let's put the numbers here so we can see them. That's a 12. That means this is 12 here also. Okay. Um, we have our, this part, which is eight. Also eight. And then these were 10s, right? Well, this is 10. The whole thing was 10. And then this was also a 10 here. This is also a 10. You can kind of see how, like, this this blue line that I'm drawing right here is the same as this line right here, right? Like, I hope that's that's what you can kind of see and understand is, like, that's that's where I get that 10 and 10 from. Let me highlight that again so you can see it. So that that's why this is 10. That's why this has to be 10 here, the part that I highlighted in blue. Right, because if you were to fold them, they'd be right on top of each other. So you could do this. You could just take this and then find all of the triangle or all the triangles and the individual rectangles. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, this is one big rectangle in the middle. And instead of this being 12 and 10, oh, sorry, 12, 10, and 10, I'm going to say this is. 12 plus 10 plus 10, which is 32. All the way across is 32. All right, so first of all, let's start with the bases. Okay, the base is a triangle. That's uh, this part, I'll highlight it in yellow. So in that case, the base area, big B, I call it big B for base area, is equal to, remember, 12 times 8 divided by 2, right? Because a triangle is half of a rectangle. We've said that a lot, right? So then calculate 12 times 8 divided by 2. 48. So we have we can plug that in up here. So 48 right here. Okay, the perimeter of the base we said remember was 12 plus 10 plus 10 right here. 12 plus 10 plus 10, which is 32. So we're gonna plug that in right there. And the height of the entire shape 
is this, which is going to be 10. Now remember, there's two of these rect uh, triangles. So we have that right here. So that's why we say two of these. Okay, so now let's put it all into our calculators, right? We know that the one triangle right here, that's going to be 48. We know the other triangle is also then 48. And we know that the big rectangle is 32 times 10, which is going to be 320. So let's go ahead and add up all of these. 48 plus 320 plus 48, right? I get 416. Oops, not 18, 416. So I know it seems a little bit confusing, but I, if you kind of understand what's going on conceptually, right? If you think about it, Oh, I get it, Mr. Leung. You're just taking all those middle, those triangles, those three triangles in the middle and making them one big rectangle. Sorry, all the rectangles in the middle making one big rectangle, right? And then understanding a triangle plus a triangle, right? On the top and the bottom, you have a triangle on the top, you have a triangle on the bottom, and they're the same exact triangle, so I'm just going to add them up twice. Let's, let's do another one because these are, these are tough. Let's do another one. All right. Uh, let's say that this is, um, we'll say this is four inches. We'll say this is three inches. We'll say this is, I don't know, um, 14 inches. And we'll say that this part right here, we'll say that's 3.5. Try it on your own. Give it a shot. This one's, again, these are tough. I know that. And we'll work on them a little bit more tomorrow, too. You think you might have a shot? Go ahead and take a shot.
Not quite. Try again. Okay, this the, again. The formula is tricky because you have to find out the. You have to. When you use the formula, you have to figure out what the B capital B stands for, the base area. So let's start. Let's start with that. Remember the area of this yellow triangle here is four times three point five divided by two. Right. That's what that's what big B stands for. So four times three point five is 14 divided by 2 is 7 right 2 times 7 is my big b my perimeter okay remember the triangle is the perimeter of the base so again the base is not necessarily what it stands on it's if it's a triangular prism the the base is a triangle okay um so not quite those who put in the chat not not quite let's follow along what's going on here Okay, so I got 4 plus 3 plus 3, which is 10. That's the perimeter. And the height of the whole shape is 14, this part right here. Now, if you prefer, if again, if you don't like the formula and you rather say, well, Mr. Leung, I'd rather do it like this. I've got two triangles here. And I know each of these are gonna be seven as an area. We just calculated that. And then I've got two, and I've got three rectangles. This one is 14 high. Okay, this is four right there. This is three, this is three. You could do it this way as well, right? Three times 14 is 42. So that's 42 over here. And then four times 14 is 56. That also works. And we can just add up everything that I'm gonna highlight right here. All right, so two times seven is, this is 14 plus 140 is 154. Or you could say add up all these, seven plus seven plus 42 plus 42 plus 56. And I add all those up and I should get also 154. So this stuff is tricky, okay? Um, if you want to try on it, this is this is there's an IXL sixth grade FF twenty three, um, but again, whichever kind of makes sense to you. And if it's not making sense, that's okay. We'll work on it some more later. But the idea is this: you could either look at this formula that that we use, where we say, okay, hey, look, two bases plus this middle, this big middle rectangle, or you could do it as all these separate rectangles and triangles. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, it's not the one's faster than the other. The formula is faster if you kind of get to it, but again, if you don't understand it, then don't even worry about it, right? Uh, the key is, again, if you look back, and we'll reflect back here a little bit, um, since we don't have too much time, you could either think of this as these two triangles, right, top and bottom, and as you unfold it, you end up with this big rectangle in the middle, okay, kind of like this first problem here. Or again, you could always just break these up. You can say, you know what, I think these are just three rectangles instead. I see these as three rectangles. Um, I'm looking at this, this shape over here on the right. And I say, you know what? I see them as three rectangles and two triangles. That's five. Okay. Um, so yeah. So do your best. Again, we, we, we can review some more of this later. But that's how you do these problems. Is understanding you have to be able to unfold these things in your mind, which is a little bit difficult. Um, but what I recommend is, is going and looking at a shape and saying, you know what? What if, I, what if I cut it open? What would I have? How many sides would I have? Can I find the area of each one of those sides? And if I can find the area of each one of the sides, then I can find the total, uh, something like that, okay? So triangular prisms are a little bit harder again, um, but if you understand this formula, then that may be something could be really, really useful uh, for you for these triangle ones.